I invite Dr. Cottrell to please come forward. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for this opportunity to be with you here at Triumphant, to worship with you, and to be in your pulpit. I give a special thanks to Pastor Richter for offering this time to me. It was a great pleasure to have him on our campus just a few weeks ago when he spoke at our uh, chapel service for, for our uh, TLU community, and I'm so happy this morning that I can connect even further with your congregation. I know that there are many deep and important connections to um, this congregation and Texas Lutheran University, and for that, I want to be sure to express my gratitude for your ongoing support, for your belief in TLU, for your prayers, and for all the ways that each of you, in your own way, join us in the journey of Lutheran higher education. It is certainly a great honor to serve as TLU's 16th president and to see the great work of preparing the world's future leaders unfold on our campus. And as president, I am fortunate to oversee all kinds of plans and activities, all of which I believe are rooted in finding ways every day on our campus to serve our students well, to honor our faith and our diversity, and to ensure our longevity. All that said, being with you this morning, I do need to provide a quick disclaimer as I step into your pulpit. Uh, I was raised in Dallas. That's not the disclaimer part. Um, but uh, I was raised Southern Baptist, uh, not Lutheran. I attended Baylor, where I met my husband, Alan, who's here with me this morning, and who came from a similar background. And then, as sometimes happens, I went through a spiritual recovery period from my Baptist years, and when I emerged from that, I was an Episcopalian, and that remains our denominational home today. My encounters with Lutherans in my formative years were not extensive, though I like to believe I was a quick learner when I found the Lutherans. But in addition to all of that, I also want to note that uh, I am not a minister, and the number of times that I have preached from a pulpit is certainly not extensive. College presidencies, uh, college presidents have a tendency to round up, and so if I apply that um, this morning, I would say that I've done this sort of thing maybe five times. So standing before you this morning as a non-Lutheran with very limited preaching experience, I again thank you for this opportunity and note that I have a lot to admire about the faith of the Lutherans. So now that I've set the bar appropriately, I do have a short message that I'd like to share on this fifth Sunday of Lent as we join Christians around the world in this season of reflection and as part of that, as I know this congregation is focusing on God's call of living in Christian community. Our scripture for today, as we just heard, focuses on the generosity of Martha who served and Mary, who anointed Jesus' feet with expensive perfume, and the false concern that Judas expressed for the poor. Now, having established that I'm not a theologian, I'll still share my sense that what we are being pointed to in this scripture is a reminder, specifically when Jesus says, you will always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. I believe that we are being reminded of the opportunity that we have to express care and to act with good intentions and to live in the moment and understand the perspective of the moment that is all a part of being in Christian community. There is a sense of opportunity that I hear embedded in this scripture that we must pay attention, that we must recognize what is important as well as what is not important and that we must act accordingly. There is also, of course, a sense of foreshadowing in this passage regarding the unfolded of upcoming unexpected events. Those simple concepts of paying attention, focusing on the importance, on the important, acting accordingly, and being ready for the unexpected, like so much that Jesus talked about, those simple concepts actually present a pretty tall order for us, or at least they do for me. 
And right now, in this particular Lenten season, as we transition, hopefully, out of a deeply wounding pandemic, and as we see war in our world, and as we live in the midst of all kinds of divided views and beliefs, in the midst of all of that, how in the world are we supposed to keep our focus and stay the course? How are we supposed to live in community when not a lot that has happened recently has gone in ways expected? I am a historian by training, so I'm going to use an example from our country's history to share a few thoughts on paying attention and staying the course even when that course becomes unexpected, uncharted territory. And the thoughts I'm sharing this morning have been shaped by a great book on Christian leadership that I've recently read entitled, Canoeing the Mountains. In the early 1800s, President Thomas Jefferson commissioned Captain Meriwether Lewis and his close friend, Second Lieutenant William Clark, to go find the long sought water route that would connect the Pacific Ocean to the Mississippi River. Everyone knew that this route existed and everyone, including the very intelligent President Jefferson, believed that its potential for commerce would ensure the prosperity of our young country. In fact, change the shape of the future of this country. And now that the United States had purchased from France the land where this water route was presumed to exist, it was a logical and exciting moment to send explorers to find and lay claim to it. Captain Lewis was honored to lead this exciting adventure. He was focused, he knew what was important, and he was ready to act. But guess what? Pretty much everything that could go wrong went wrong. For starters, kind of an, a significant point here, for starters, the journey was built on a false assumption that the geography of the West was going to be a lot like the geography of the East. It turns out that's not the case. And this became completely clear to Captain Lewis after 15 months of hard and difficult travel. Cold weather, mosquitoes, grizzly bears, death, detours. One day, after all of that, Captain Lewis walked up a hill near the Continental Divide, expecting to look down a slope that would reveal the Columbia River, which would then have a current that would take him and his crew quickly to the Pacific Ocean. All would go as planned after all of this difficulty. But instead of finding that river, he looked down after climbing that hill and he saw the Rocky Mountains, immense ranges of beautiful mountains in every direction, beautiful and majestic, but not what you want to see when you're looking for a water passage that will move you quickly to the ocean. And so the story of Lewis and Clark actually became a story of going off the map and into uncharted territory. In their time of focus and action, they had to reframe their entire mission to deal with the unexpected. And some have observed that this moment 15 months into this expedition, with the only certainty now being that all of their assumptions had been wrong, that this was the moment when the real journey began. Paying attention became a whole new concept. That's what happens when experienced river rafters have to become mountaineers. When the geography of hope gives way to the geography of reality. The goal was the same, but every single assumption about how it would be reached had to be changed. But this was the moment they were in. This was what was before them. This was what they were called to act on. This is when they left their boats and found some horses so that the journey could continue. It's also been noted that this is when a higher purpose, higher than even finding the uh, commerce, uh, experiencing the outcome of finding the water route that President Jefferson was so excited about, beyond that, a higher purpose kicked in and they resolved that their efforts were really about education, exploration, and service to others. 
and those ideals would guide the difficult and totally rearranged decisions that were now ahead for them. These men became true discoverers. They became true collaborators and true believers that they could adapt to what was ahead. They did all of this by going against what had been the conventional knowledge about water routes and just about everything else in the West. And they made it. They reached the ocean, they even traveled back safely, and they left the world with a wealth of knowledge about the Western United States. They established diplomatic relations with numerous indigenous nations. There was no continuous waterway, as had been assumed, but they were able to produce maps and identify trails and map the topography of the land. Knowledge triumphed over commerce, hope outpaced setbacks, and over time, Lewis and Clark became the most famous explorers in American history. So, what does the story of Lewis and Clark mean for today's Christians? Instructed as we are by Jesus to live in the moment, but finding that moment not what we expected, and even more so, finding 2022 to feel somewhat like living in uncharted territory, or as we have all said so often in the past two years in unprecedented times. Well, I believe that Lewis and Clark and their story reminds us that things will not always go as expected, that conventional wisdom may be wrong, and that reframing our own mission from time to time may be required, that Jesus expects us to pay attention and to determine what is required of us to live in community in a world that is fragmented and unpredictable. That canoeing the mountains actually is not possible, but that adapting our framework to get over the mountains is. This Lenten season provides us the opportunity to reflect on what Jesus expects of us, especially in the context of his death and resurrection. Surely, the life of Jesus and the way that his ending played out represents uncharted territory in all kinds of ways. And yet, it is that unexpected outcome, that departure from conventional wisdom, that clear sense that greater things happened after his death than ever could have been imagined. It's those things that give us our hope in this season and at this particular time. We're still in Lent, but we know that we are an Easter people, and soon we will make it through the mountains, even the ones we didn't expect, to find the water. I thank you so much for letting me share these thoughts with you and be with you all this morning, and my prayer is that we may all be grateful for the opportunities we have, each of us, to stay focused, to discern what is important, to adapt, and to serve. Thank you again, and amen.